is to um, and then and then the byproduct will be what we want rather than lead with 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 that. Um, so connection and community. Uh, these are uh, these this community are the people who are these people, right? They're people who care. They care about what you do and they care about what you offer. Uh, they look forward to hearing from you and and, and what to do. Um, and they also want to do business with you. You do that by committing to 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 you know to your message. Yeah, yeah, you know your posts and the message can be entertaining, but if you're if we're just entertaining and there's no calls to action or no plan to kind of get these folks as as clients, you know, again, it's 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 just kind of wasting energy. So, um, you know, who is your audience? Who are you talking to? That's something that every person talking about. What's your market? Who who is that? That's a big question. You know, we're not going to dive into that today, but at, at the same time, it's that's a big thing you have to ask yourself when you're doing this. That's part of the plan. How can I craft a message if I don't know who I'm going to give that message to? So knowing that first, then it's easier to, you know, you can work on that message. So you, I, I know for a fact, because I deal with a lot of companies and businesses that you, you can, you can grow your business successfully from here, from that mindset. You just need, again, to be consistent and steady. You, uh, and then you'll soon discover that your minimum viable audience, as they say, uh, which is kind of the smallest group of people that could pot, that that can, can sustain a business and, and work. Um, then you, after that, then it starts growing because they start telling people and you start and, and then you start kind of um, you know growing your business. Now, this is foundational to a business because I'm not saying this is the only thing you're going to do to market a business. This this session today is not about that, but I'll kind of touch to that. That's why we, we're here in the chamber, uh, you know. Um, meeting. I mean, you know, a business has other ways to expose their company to the, to an audience, but we're talking about social media today and digital marketing. So that's kind of what I'm going to focus on. But when you, we do that as your base, uh, I always say cake before icing. So your foundation in marketing is, is what I'm talking about. And then once you kind of have your cake, then it's a lot easier to put icing on that. Right. Uh, which, what is that? It could be anything, you know, billboards and TV and more of it, you know, all kinds of things, but you have to have a foundation to that starts with mindset, be steady. Um, so I would say more is not better. Better is better. Good message, not a lot. It, it, you know, it, you can, it, that, that's, the, that's the, the key. So when I said earlier, uh, commit to a manageable pace of message, then whatever manageable is for you, then start there. And then you can kind of, kind of build a momentum from that. So, um, Again, stay with me. I'm laying a foundation, and I promise I'll promise I'll bring this full circle. Um, all right. So before I move on, I just want to give one more point. Uh, the key to simplifying to, to, to simplifying things with your business is um, I like to break things down to the mo more most basic elements. I told you I was a very grassroots marketer, and it, and it's about connection, right? So basic marketing, right? You have a product to sell or a service. Um, you need people. To know about it, then you need to craft a message that clearly explains your value proposition and what you're selling. Then you create a pathway to sell that, and then you deliver your message. And then I'll add a few more things. I didn't have my notes, but I always say you measure in what works, you rinse and repeat and do it again. And you commit to that pace. Um, okay, so that that's mindset. There's the foundation. Now I'm going to jump into content and messaging. Um, okay. So content, what is content when, when it comes to content, uh, information is not the point. Um, raw content is not the point. Eyeballs are not the point. The right eyeballs are the point. Um, the goal is not to create content for the sake of creating content. You create content to reach your goals and to communicate your message. How much? Well, that's another conversation in another, in another time. Right. That's part of the strategy. Who are they? Where are they? How often? Who? Right. So. Um, so I'm going to change the word content from now on to from here on out to messaging. I think that's a better word because content, again, is used by everybody these days in marketing content. Data is content. I'm a content creator, whatever. Right. Uh, there's times I see influencers who are not in, all they do is entertain. They don't influence anybody. They have a million followers and, and then they, they try to monetize this by adding a product to that and nothing happens. I'm not saying that's a, 
that there's a lot of when when that's done correctly, then it uh, it actually is a really good um, tactic uh, in marketing. I'll touch on a little uh, touch on that a little later. But again, message message. Um, the right message to the right person at the right time. Um, so crafting a message or messages uh, and building a narrative, which I always like to say, uh, it, it, what's going to happen is that you, you, it's going to be a lot easier for you to communicate your value proposition to and, uh, and your offer to people through your posts and your communications, whether it's email, in this case, because we're talking about this today, social media and, and Google. Uh, you need to communicate your expertise, you need to communicate your value proposition, like I said, and you need to have a point of view and then communicate that often. How? Well, we're talking today about social media and Google. Um, so these are platforms, right? Google, social media and Google um, are, are basically a platform to, to, to access these people. And they're two different animals. So it's a very um, difficult to overlap them. There is some overlap. So I'm going to kind of you know, kind of break those apart and start with social media, right? Um, now you have a message and then you have to make sure that that message is clear. So and then communicating that message to an audience, you do that through these platforms, uh, Facebook, uh, LinkedIn, Instagram, um, you know, the big ones right there, uh, TikTok, right? Um, they give you, I always say these are conduits to an audience. The platform is not the secret. The platform is your pipeline to those people. Um, I'm a, uh, like I mentioned earlier, I'm very grassroots um, marketing. Uh, what that mean? you know, I'm a person that doesn't like to just sit here and wait people to come to me. I want to find where they are and I go to them. But if I go, I, going to them with the right message is what's magical because then you start connecting. And again, you start building that community and you've been building that trust and then your, your leads and, and, you, and you start growing your business that way. So it was hard for me to jump into social media tactics before I laid that foundation because it doesn't make it, it's just, again, wasted energy. Um, so hopefully this is making sense. Um, conduits to an audience, social media. Um, we have Google, we have, you know, again, the other platforms. Uh, again, I'm going to start with social media. Um, so we have Facebook. Now with Facebook, what's interesting is, you know, Facebook has been having a, an identity crisis for the last several years. Uh, I'm Facebook, I'm Meta, I don't know what it I am, but if Facebook was a, a country, it would be the third largest country in the world as far as population. So it has to be taken into, you know, in seriously, and I do. Uh, there's good things in, in that tool and there's bad things, but if, you know, I can take a hammer and I can build something with it or I can take a hammer and destroy it. It's a tool. It's what we, I do behind it. That That's big. So Facebook, it, regardless of how we feel about anything outside of marketing, it is an incredible uh, and the biggest pipe outside the internet itself to access people. Uh, now, what's happening when I say that Facebook has this identity crisis is that they've, um, you know, there's different ways to communicate through this one tool. It's like if you're on Facebook, you'll, you, you know, obviously all of you most most um, most likely are, you know, you can create video content and then deploying that video content is you can. Do it in different ways. Obviously, you can put it in in a post, and it shows up in Facebook Watch, or you can do a short video and put it in Stories, or you can do a, a, another vid and put it in, as a reel. Right? You know, everybody's been seeing these reels kind of pop up, the the, the which is not going anywhere. Um, as a marketer, I have to now, t you know, I've been doing video for a long time, and I we've shifted a lot of our strategy with our clients and how to present their message, through, you know, using uh, reels and and stories, but. Again, this is a knowing that these are ways to communicate, you know, uh, to this audience. We then that allows us to to adjust our strategy on, in in crafting that message and how to communicate it. Is it a video? Is it a static post? Is it just uh, you know anything in between? It could be anything. Um, then we have Instagram, who obviously everybody knows was purchased by Facebook uh, five six years ago, uh, and you know as a person. I'm on Facebook and I'm on Instagram, I'm on LinkedIn, I'm on TikTok, I'm on Twitter. And uh, as a marketer, it's also good to understand, like if I'm in, in, in if I'm in Instagram, I behave differently in Instagram that I that I when I am in Facebook because the platform is specifically built for a certain type of behavior. As a marketer, when we when we um, write content, sorry, messaging and build that, and we 
put out on this platform, understanding how people behave on that platform and who's on that platform is very vital to that strategy to, to, so again, the tactic is creating the video and putting it in, we have to go back and see and understand who, who that audience is so that we're able to actually spend our time in a thing that's in, in something that's going to bring us back um, a better return on our investment, better ROI. But the big ones right now are Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, TikTok, and Twitter. Um, different platforms. There's others, a bunch of out, uh, out there, but uh, I find myself in my company uh, in these platforms, mostly with, with my clients. Um, so they're uh, they allow me to communicate a message, a, a, a product or service or message to to prospective customers. Um, people behave, like I said, differently in these platforms. So understanding that is very important. Um, so again, I'm going to come full circle at the end with questions. So if uh, you have any questions, please, you know, jot them down and I, I, I promise I'll, I'll address all of them. So again, social media, very important um, mindset we talked about was you know, understanding that it's about connection and building community and crafting a message that's specific to that audience. The social media platforms are there for us to use as a way to uh, present that message to that audience. Um, and then the commitment from um, to make sure you get something out of this is to commit to a, a manageable pace of information and message that uh, and be and, and stick to that and then build on that. Um, Okay, so let me shift to Google. Um, there's a lot here to unpack. Uh, so I'm gonna give you some, like a high altitude flyby here, because uh, there's not enough time to even, uh, we can live in Google for three hours. So Google is more than just a search engine, but we'll all start there, right? So Google, uh, it's a pivotal part of any marketing plan and uh, and it has to be considered. And if it's ignored, it, uh, it's, it's gonna hurt your business. Uh, Plain and simple. Um, it is a search engine. So when you search something, uh, for the engine to for that engine to be trusted, for that and for that search engine to be, and I'll say Google to be to have credibility, it has to allow you to find what you're looking for quickly. I'm looking for this, and if I hit the button and I have to go past page one to find what I'm looking for, that tool is not working. And Google understands that very clearly. So knowing, you know it creates a set of rules. So to, to guess based on your search query, um, what, you, what you want. So, and that's what they call algorithms, right? So algorithms is just basically, they change these all the time because, um, I mean, several times a year where uh, they're changing because technology is changing. There's more platforms that are out there changing. And, and that behave people, um, you know, COVID did a big number on this because people started behaving differently in the marketplace and in different places. You know, look at us right here. None of us are in the same place. Normally these types of meetings were in a conference room or in some place and, you know, so, you know, they have to adjust to, to these behaviors. So these algorithm changes adjust. So knowing these and understanding that um, it, it's a very important part of marketing is knowing how am I gonna be found here um, so there's, you know, and that's, that's foundational to, to Google, but after that, um, there, uh, not what I, but I, by the way, what I just talked about, it's called SEO search and optimization. So you're, you know, uh, Google indexes your, your website uh, based on the information it has with the words that are keywords or the, 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 the text that's on your website. And then uh, based on the search criteria, then it, it, it kind of, uh, indexes your website and when somebody searches then it gives it um you know relevance to that search there's a lot more to this because there you know it looks at a lot of other factors uh online authority how many link how many websites are linking to that are those websites what are what's the traffic on those websites there's all kinds of things but at the end of the day what i want to leave you with is consider google make sure on your website that it's optimized if you don't know what that is find uh, somebody close to you or, you know, that can give you more pointers. There's a whole industry about this. Uh, we have to take that into account in my company, but you have to consider it. Uh, you know, so you can have the best website in the world. If nobody knows you exist, it doesn't matter, right? 
Um, so Google is also a local directory. And this is a big one because in the last few years, Google's algorithms have put a lot of weight into what they call the Google My Business. It's now the, the, the Google prof, uh, Business Profile. But the GMB, the Google My Business, it's what you see when you do a search on Google with the map. So it, based on your location uh, settings, it sees based on your on your search criteria, it'll, it'll give you a result on the websites, but also the businesses, and you'll see it on the right hand side. And in, in you know you guys have seen it. So they're in in the Google um, profile. There's you know, business hours, the description of the business. There can be pictures in there and products and services. And and uh, a business owner can post offers to that. And then the reviews are there. So it's kind of like the local presence of, uh, of that business. And Google is putting a lot of focus on local, which is good for us here in, Do in, in, in Central Delaware, because by nature, all of us here in Central Delaware are, are local focused. The chamber is about, you know, the, the chamber is about, um, you know, helping those local businesses. So Google leans that direction, uh, but understanding that then the, 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 it's on the business owner to make sure that business profile is updated and, and you use the, um, what do you call it? Uh, they, they use the words optimize, but I always say fill up, fill up the blanks and then, um, you know, in there, fill up, make sure your hours are right. Uh, well, somebody, somebody's not happy. <laughs> um, so let's see here. Maybe we can mute. Let me see if I can do a mute. There we go. Um, so the Google uh, profile, just make sure that it's filled out. Go through every field, make sure everything's in there. Google will penalize a business if that business profile is neglected. Um, so go back and make sure it's refreshed and people use the fancy word, oh, make sure it's optimized. Optimized means fill out the blanks. <laughs> you know. And uh, what's nice about Google My Business now is again, you can post to it. It's not a social media platform that people can, you can have engagement in, but you can actually post offers and pictures uh, like you would like you would on Facebook. Um, but those posts uh, eventually um, go away, but it, it increases, they're searchable. So when people are searching for you, when you have those posts, it allows them to find you better. So it helps your optimization per se, uh, their SEO. So again, don't forget about Google search engine and the local. Those are two big ones that they're um, really putting a lot of focus on. The last Google property I want to talk to you about, it's, everybody knows about, is YouTube. So video content is very, very important. I believe in it very heavily uh, it, because it works. People like video. Uh, we see it in short form. We see it in long form. We see it in stories. We see it in reels. We see it in TikTok. You can communicate something, uh, you know, as a marketer, you know, we always say the more emotions and in, in, in senses that we can, um, uh, you know, include in, in a message, the, the more somebody's going to remember it. So when you see a video, you actually can hear and you can see. So we're, there were two senses, right? When you're reading something, you're only seeing something. So it's very powerful. And like I mentioned earlier, message first, right? Messaging. So obviously, oh, I want to do a video. Well, Crafting that video appropriately is very important, but YouTube is uh, a place now that it has to be considered. Um, it is in itself its own platform, its own thing, its own ecosystem. There's millionaires that have been created, just content creators that are there to entertain, and that's a that tool is used for that. But in context with this conversation, as a business owner, you know we always talk about um, building long form videos that are informational and people can sit down for two, three minutes and consume. And that's kind of the resting place where I like to kind of put those. From those videos, we like to extract smaller bits of content and, and messages and push those out in small, shorter videos on, on reels and, and maybe some TikToks and, uh, and even just anywhere uh, in the other platforms. But, um, you know, so you, if you want somebody to kind of, you have a lot more to say and you have something more in depth, this is kind of where I recommend um, where the videos to kind of live, and then you kind of point people that direction to that channel. And the reason I say that as a marketer is because you know there's a wink, wink conversation in 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 in, in the marketing world where the more you patronize Google, uh, the more favor you're going to get. 
you know, and it's like Google likes Google. They don't care about us. They just want people to go there. So if you're using YouTube and we're, you know, we can we can leverage that tool to help us in our businesses. Uh, so there's a lot more that I can touch on here, but in light of time, um, I, I I just need to move on. So I've I talked about mindset, right? And then I I talked about content and messaging and what the differences are, and then um, I, I I kind of touched on social media, the different platforms, and and again we could do a full day webinar with this and break this down in, into a lot of things. So that, like I mentioned earlier, I wanted to just do this high level kind of foundational thing that will give you some course direction and at least guidance of, of okay, this is kind of where I need to go. I, I was going this way, now I need to go this way. But like I promised, I'll kind of bring it and give you some quick tips and things you can kind of apply uh, to kind of get you some some nuggets that you might be able to grab with you. Um, so I, I was going last night, I was sitting, kind of typing some notes and, and um, kind of typed up 17, 17 easy ways to, to use social media to get you new customers. So um, a lot of this I've, I've kind of touched on, but I'm going to kind of go down the line. And, and, and um, if you know this already, great. You've been reminded. Sometimes I forget. I have blind spots, so it's good to be reminded of something I know. And if you don't, then hopefully <laughs> this some of this stuff helps you. So uh, the first thing I want to talk about uh, easy ways to get new customers is to know, like I mentioned earlier, is to know your target, know who you're targeting. And I hate to use that word, but that's a word that's used in um, in marketing. Again, I'm very grassroots. I'm about connection, so I don't want to be targeted. Don't target me. Uh, I, I'm a person, I have feelings, I want that, but I, but I have to know who I want to, as a marketer, who I'm going to be speaking to, right? So we have to know who they are before we start doing anything else. We want to take a deep dive and, 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 and say, um, you have to know your audience. And that's an exercise that that's the tip. Take it, take some time and kind of figure out who your audience is before you start communicating to them. Uh, it does, it, it, if you just say, well, just my customers, well, that's that's a cop out. You're trying to get, you, you know, as a business, you have to kind of go deeper. Uh, and it seems like a simple step and a simple thing, but your social media marketing will not be effective unless you know who you're speaking to. Um, then uh, the second one. So first one was know who you're targeting, know who your audience. Number two is use the right social media platforms. Um, there's a, there's a tactic where you just do one post and put, put the same thing everywhere at the same time. And that's okay. At the same time, um, if you know who your audience is and then you know where they go, then there's some some of my clients, for example, that are not on, on an Instagram. They're just on LinkedIn and on Facebook and some that are just on one. And we have that conversation. So, you know, that that's very important to consider. So then you can put your effort into building content and messaging for those platforms. Um, uh, okay, so number two, number three, sorry, uh, optimize your social media profiles for business. So optimize, again, buzzword, um, update your profiles, make sure that everything you created the profile, uh, you just fill it out. <laughs> I mean, pretty simple, your bio, your profile picture, make sure everything is, you know, fill up, fill in all the blanks. These things, these things seem trivial, but, but a lot of people neglect these things and it hurts them. Um, when people are, are, are doing their due diligence to, to decide whether they want to do business with, with a company, they are going to click around and they're going to see what they're doing. If things are not uh, up to date and con, con, um, that doesn't build trust. Um, so just make sure you pay attention to those. Uh, number four is build your brand on social media. Um, even though that uh, the ultimate goal in social media for business is to generate more sales, your strategy doesn't always have to be so direct. So a strong brand uh, creates um, sales on its own. So um, you know that means increasing your brand awareness and building trust and establishing authority through your content and your presentation and how people interact with you and how you interact with them. That's how you build your brand. That's another you know, two two hour conversation there, but it's it's very important. Uh, more pe the more people that that know about your business and, and see it in a positive light, that's a big deal. So um, build that brand. 
focus on that. Uh, number five, a little bit of a uh, offshoot of that is keep that brand consistent. I always talk about this. I'm a designer. I'm a, I'm a creative person and continuity and consistency in the look and feel of everything in business is important. If things are not consistent in visually, that, that is that, you know, that's not best practice, right? We're, I'm not saying it hurts, but it doesn't help, right? Um, you know, your design colors, the images you use, um, and they should be the same on Instagram as they are on Facebook. And so the customer experience, when they go to your website, when they walk into your storefront, when they go, when you see that they see you in the different platforms, there should be a constant continuity of vibe between all the branding in, in these places. Um, so your message and your visuals need to be consistent and cohesive everywhere. And that what that does is it builds trust because it pays it, it, it people instinctively know that you're paying attention to this so that well they if they do that to themselves they're going to uh they're going to take care of me. Uh I use an example that's very common but you know in you know uh Dina would know would, would tell you cuz she interviews a lot of people and recently also but uh, me hiring people in the past you know there um people say make sure your resume is filled out and you have everything you know the right way and if uh, and if something is wrong or a misspelling in that, then people will just like immediately will disqualify you. You could be the most qualified person, but if the, the point here is if they didn't pay attention to that detail, then what kind of other things are they going to overlook? And that's the kind of the same way with your branding and your consistency across all platforms. Um, this one is a really interesting one. My next one, it's uh, connect with influencers on social media. And that's a big thing. What the heck is an influencer? I touched on it a little bit earlier, but it's just basically people that, um, it's effective when it's done right, but it's it doesn't work when it's done wrong. So and just, hey, let me get an influencer to talk about my product. Doesn't automatically mean you're going to get a lot of sales, right? Connection, right? Now, they have, they have credibility. It's almost like getting a referral from somebody. If I refer a business to another business, I got uh, uh, my reputation kind of is in that handoff because if that doesn't work out, it's on me because I'm the one who connected those people, right? So... An influencer in some in 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 the in the digital form is is like that. So, uh, but what I'd like to say is, if your product complements what that person stands for and the values of their audience align with yours, then this could be a great opportunity for you. So when this is done right, um, it, it can be a game, a game changer and actually accelerate a lot of things with your business. It's not it's not the tactic; it's a tactic. Uh, this is more icing than cake, like I mentioned earlier. Got to make sure if you're doing this and you don't have all the stuff I talked about, a, a consistent brand and consistent message, it doesn't matter. Um, but when it's done right, uh, and I, will, I won't dive too deep into this, but there's also, you don't have to have an influencer that is has millions of followers. There's a lot of micro influencers that have, you know, 5, 10, 15, 20,000 followers in a local area that are very effective in, in helping, um, you know, move product. There's a lot of times where people have podcasts and uh, and have a guest who have their audience. They're an influencer. So then when you connect these, overlap these two worlds, then that audience gets exposed to this product and vice versa. So there's ways to kind of cross promote your business through these individuals that now the world calls influencers. Um, all right. So number seven, uh, let your fans promote you. If your business is worth the salt, like I say, you'll eventually end up um, with paying customers who enjoy um, talking about you and rave about you. I, I, I call these like customer evangelists. They love you and they'll tell everybody about you. Uh, spread the good news of your business. Um, so pay attention to who those people are. Uh, sometimes maybe you can offer them freebies or discounts on the side just, um, just to kind of encourage them. Um, my daughter has a uh, online business, a boutique, very successful, and she does this very well. She can her audience is she's very close to them, and they're close, and they she and it continues to grow. They so she's got these, you know, this, um, but they're also customers. They're not sitting there uh, just listening. They're actually buying, and that's a magical place. Um, Num the next one, uh, run uh, some de deals and promotion and, and contests. You know. I think that's kind of self-explanatory. Uh, find ways to bring buzz to your business by doing some promotions. 20% off, what you know, however that is. That's important. Um, 
uh, use social media advertising. Um, so this is interesting because this is um, foundation, you know, this is icing, right? We have cake. Cake is doing your building your message consistently, communicating your message. Um, if you're in a bootstrap budget, meaning you know it, your business feeds itself, right? Um, organic social media marketing, meaning the stuff you post yourself and building that audience, that, as I, I talked about, and connecting with your audience is in, is incredibly important. Once you're doing that, then you you might want to consider uh, maximizing. In, uh, that message to a larger audience quicker um, by paying for it, you know, so, you know, social media ads, um, boosting your posts uh, on Google, doing Google ads. It's um, that allows your message that's already working with organically to be exposed to a larger audience quicker. So that's just a matter of budget. What do you want to kind of kind of money you want to throw out there? And that allows you to to access more people quicker. So social media advertising. Uh, the next one is uh, use a call to action. This might seem very um, uh, common sense, but people don't do that. You, you know, some it's um, we refer to this as a CTA, a call to action. So, the, um, but you know, if you want more followers, ask for people to follow you. If you want somebody to buy your product, ask them to buy your product. That's a call to action. Uh, if you want it, then you have to ask for it. My mom always said, Javi, if you don't. Um, uh, you know, I can't read your mind. If you want, you, you have to ask for it. Um, I was trying, I, I paused because I think sometimes in Spanish, I'm trying to remember what you said it to me. I'm trying to translate. But if you don't ask, they just, I remember now, if you don't ask, you don't get. That's what my mom used to say. So um, that that's something that it, it's some common sense, but a lot of business people and a lot of posts out there, they're like, here's this. And there's there's no pathway to a transaction or to take them to the next step. Make sure you have some calls to action. Um, next one, provide a freebie or a special offer. I did that. I said that earlier, but this is what I mentioned earlier was more to your kind of your your customers that are very repeat customers. But this is actually in general, like I said, twenty percent discount codes if you have e-commerce. Uh, you know, try to find ways to do to uh, to to generate leads uh, and and in. Uh, there's an adage or like a percentage. It's not kind of in 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 my world where messaging out there should be about eighty percent informational, where it's stuff I can teach you about my industry and the how it can help you, and then twenty percent in salesy. If we're always selling, 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 people are going to get tone deaf to that and, and tune you out. But if you're giving them some information, so I'll give you an example. I have a client who is a garage door and gutter company. Wow. Well, fall is coming. Leaves are going to fall down. They have this product called Gutter Guard that covers the gutters. Well, the messaging, based on what, what's happening, is hey, um, it's time. You know, do you want to put your ladder up and clean your gutters, or you want to get this product, right? Um, it, it, but we could. That's the sale. But if I back up from that, we have we can we we were we were talking about this last week. We can do different ways you can clean your gutters and what to do with trees around your, you know, some how-to things that as a homeowner can do to themselves to make sure that every year, you know, their gutters don't get clogged up. We don't ask for the sale right there in that, in that message. But if that person sees this message and says, oh, I can do this, but then they go in and click around, they're going to see that there's a product that can solve this problem a lot better than what we taught them, right? So very purposeful, but we can say 20% off gutter guard for this month never get on a ladder again and risk falling and breaking your neck because then if you cover those gutters, you don't have to empty them anymore because they won't get filled up with leaves, right? So that's, but what's interesting about that is that's the end product of conversations I've had with my client. And we have, we have to talk about why before the how. The tactic's easy once we kind of know what we're trying to do. And once we know the pain points that, that an audience has or, for that, or that those customers have. So we touch on those and then we can, but offers and freebies are, are always good. Um, so um, when I, we talked about social media, but make sure to be social. There's a lot of rigid people out there just posting and not engaging. Have fun with this, right? Um, it doesn't always have to be strictly business. Um, some people go all the way out and I've seen like, a, I've seen sometimes things that I kind of, I roll my eyes, but I figure, hey, they're doing something. At least it's better than nothing. But I've seen like a, 
landscaping company doing Taco Tuesday, like recipes. I'm like, that, that there's no that doesn't align with that business. But hey, it, it works. But uh, for them, that's fine. But uh, if you're if you're doing stuff out there and people are engaging you and maybe do some posts that are fun and, and, and in between your your salesy stuff. You, so again, the 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 have fun but and be social with social media. It's not business media, it's social media. It's about connection. It's about building community. How do you do that? You you are you, you 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 bring the walls down, be real and be consistent. People that will gain trust and when people trust you, they will buy from you. Um and then this kind of bleeds over my the next one is personality. Show your personality. So um that's pretty straightforward. Um I'm pretty high energy, as you probably can figure out. I'm just, when you see me like this, you see me like this anywhere else. So that's kind of the way I operate. Um, but no, you know, every business has different kind of vibe and different voice and different personality. Don't take yourself so seriously. Just again, have fun and show your personality. Um, provide customer service is the next one, number 14. Um, it's not just pre-sale. This is also taking care of their people post sale and what does this have to do with social media well it does a lot because it, it, you know that's a people communicate with you this way and even current customers complaints they go in there and put a bad review well i had a bad experience where do they go they go to google or facebook to tell the world how much that company sucked or how much some how good somebody was you know i i have a mixed feelings about this because as a marketer I'm seeing a lot of people use this, uh, weaponizing this, a lot of customers to get what they want, um, but it's there. It's, it has to be considered. So if you're if you're providing if you're providing customer service, meaning um, if you know don't have sword fights with people on service that's neat. Um, okay, two, a few more, and we're doing good. It's eight fifty. Okay, um, create and use hashtags. We hear about hashtags in the old days of. Where I when I started doing stuff in the internet, the initial tagging used to be with blogs. It's a way that you would categorize. In, in blogs, you have categories and you have tags. So, for example, if you have an article on a blog, and it's ice cream, the the, the category, then the tags could be chocolate and vanilla and, and and you know and strawberry, right? So when when you have 50 articles, the way people find them is through the tags and the categories. Fast forward, Twitter started using hashtags. And um, and to separate conversations within that platform. So I'm, you know, find us on hashtag high ground. Okay, so you hit that, all of a sudden it separates the, that feed into that hashtag and people can have communication there. Fast forward, um, you know, now people are using it different ways. In Facebook, um, it's a little different than, than, than Instagram. Understanding how that audience uses the hashtags is very important because uh, if you're not inclu including relevant popular hashtags in your post, then uh, things that are trending within the community and, um, and you, you know, it, it can hurt you and people won't find your, your posts. If you think about it, the newsfeed is constantly adding more posts. And so the more, you have to be able to kind of bump up and, and the hashtags allow you to do that. But Pinterest has different ways of using it than LinkedIn, than Instagram, than Twitter and Facebook. So under, there's little nuances about those, but um the the lesson here is you know figure it out and use them it, it, they're important as part of your posts um two more here uh spy on your competition i'm a person that doesn't care and i say that very strongly ultimately what my competition's doing that doesn't mean i'm not paying attention but i don't really care because i like to lead and let them come behind me i'll set a tone and i'll set a pace and let them figure it out I, I have my plans and we have my, my you know, and I'm going to execute that regardless of what they're doing. However, if you're getting started and you it's good, it's good to know what people in your industry are doing. And um, um, I personally, again, don't see other people's competition. There's enough business out there to go around uh, and no, nobody has 100% market share in anything, right? But Apple doesn't have 100% and you know, McDonald's doesn't. It, it, you know, so it's okay if there's other people that proves that there's a market for your product, but it's good to see what they're doing because you can get some good information and ideas to help you. Doesn't mean steal their stuff, <laughs> just inspiration. <laughs> um, 
like what kind of content are they posting? What's their audience? Which platforms are they using? What, you know, what they're getting, uh, how they're getting more, more of the engagement, how people are interacting with them, just ideas. It's, it's good to do that because then, you know, we kind of run, uh, run out of ideas ourselves. And I always say all artists, all creative people are thieves, right? And, you know, they just, they look at other things for inspiration and then they take that information and make, make it their own. So spy on your competition. Um, and the last one here is build your email list using social media marketing. Uh, today's topic was about social media and it was about Google, but an email list is very important. Chamber does that very well. That's a big email list. And there's emails that you get in your inbox regularly from the chamber. If, you know, if you're a business, you should consider building any time that you have a client or a lead or anybody get those email addresses because you can now, um, you know, send direct messages to these people um, with specific offers and things like that. So that's something to always consider. Uh, and you can do that by uh, anytime you have these offers in, in these, you know, or different things, you know, um, get their email address. So um, I'm going to give you, I just thought about something. I'm going to give you one more bonus one. So it's 18 now. Um, if you're now in message creation, content creation mode, the go, um, try to, it's time consuming. So if you know the, the foundational things that I talked about earlier, and that's kind of there, you know, it's a lot easier to kind of plan your content creation time in, in bulk. And the goal is, uh, and this is always a moving target for me and my clients, but we try to have, be a, a month ahead in, in, in our message as much as possible. It's, again, it's a moving target, but that's, the mindset and the, and the, and, and the goal. So we'll all block out time and we'll say, we're going to spend this amount of time working on these. We already have talked about strategy and what the message is going to be and what the purpose of these messages is going to be. But now we have to now create the creative, create the graphic, create the video, create the, the message, and then schedule it out. So doing that in bulk is it's going to allow you to actually um, not get so overwhelmed because you know, one post here, one post there, and you're breaking your stride with what you're doing in your, in your business and other things can be kind of overwhelming. So, okay, so that's a lot um, out of saliva. <laughs> um, but in summary, the key here is, is to do something and do it consistently and be consistent. And a little bit of something is a whole lot better than a whole lot of nothing, right? Um, I talked to you about mindset. I explained the difference between content and messaging. Uh, I also hopefully communicate, um, and hopefully I communicated with you how I, uh, how I felt about both and how they apply to you and why you should care, right? Uh, I also touched on social media uh, platforms uh, as they um, align with business, and then also a little bit about Google. Any one of these topics we could spend two hours in or more. Um, and then I wrapped it up with some quick tips. What I can do is, uh, I can do, uh, Dina and, and Cleo, I can do a document and a PDF and make it available with, with, uh, with these tips. And then I, it can be distributed to the, to the group later. If that's, you know, um, I have no problem doing, I have in my notes, I can just make, you know, stick my logo on it. There's that would be perfect. There's a lesson right there. And, uh, <laughs> um, so I hope that you got something out of this, uh, a nugget, something you might be saying, who the heck is this guy? Crazy guy. Uh, what the heck is he talking about? But hopefully you, you have one nugget, of something that you can take with you and apply immediately. And, and that'll help your business grow or your the organization you're working for uh, or that you're responsible for. So we're here with five minutes to spare. I think I kind of, uh, I can want to open it up to questions. If anybody have any has any questions. Nobody has questions. I'm going to take that as a, as a, um, as a, compliment. they're a little stunned. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is how I'm taking the coffee. I just want to hear it. So I, I have a couple questions. Okay. I'll get it going. Um, I've noticed a lot on the social media that they're talking about the reels and then paying for the ads. Those right. are two good things to get your information out is what it yeah. seems to be. Yeah, Reels and TikTok is not going anywhere. A few years ago, when this all started, I was like the um, like I you know um, I, I look at these things and I look at industry and I'm like, okay, before I start kind of talking to my clients about this, I'm gonna make sure this is gonna be something that's gonna be around. Um, but that's people are consuming video in short spurts. So a reel or a TikTok, it's just a video that's 
pushed out vertically, <laughs> but it can be 30 seconds, 60 seconds song. That message is, you know, people are now scrolling up to watch videos. That's, that's a behavioral change in that. So the answer to your question is yes, uh, that should be a, a very much considered and when we're, uh, as part of a marketing plan. Now, remember, I talked about message. There's a difference between a TikTok of somebody dancing around, which is fun, excuse me, which is fine. I've done those. They're totally fine. But there's a way to use this tool as a business to clever ways to, to align it with your, with, your, with your strategy. If it's only about entertainment and not you know, building community and trust and, and, and eventually some cl clients, then it's just waste and energy. But so the answer to that question is yes, consider it. It's not going anywhere. Um, what's interesting is Instagram created IGTV, Instagram TV, which was supposed to be the YouTube killer. And now IGTV is dead because TikTok came and stole the hearts of the world. And then Instagram and Facebook goes, holy crap, we got to do something, created Reels, which is the equivalent of that, you know, and, but that kind of killed uh, full length video on Instagram. And now I don't know if anybody's paying attention, but YouTube has YouTube shorts and they're the same thing as Reels. So YouTube is realizing that we have people here, people can, are creating vertical quick content in video, you know, we got to put it. So right now, um, so they want to build out many platforms for people to deliver that that video, but you're—I don't know if anybody's noticed. You've gone to Instagram and you're in Reels, and you see a TikTok video. Somebody exported out of one platform and put in another. So a lot of people are using this. So the answer is yes, needs to be considered. And as far as pay, yes, uh, I believe that once you have a, a good foundational um, process of posting and your message out there, then you should con and that's working organically, meaning without paying for it. Then if you want to accelerate the performance of that, then uh, uh, um, boosting some posts and and paying for Google ads and, and some advertising within those platforms, I think it's very, um, should be considered for sure. Okay. Anybody else? No? Maybe we can go around and let everyone introduce themselves. Sure. Who wants to go first? I'll go first. Okay. Well, yeah, I'm looking for you. <laughs> There you oh, there you are. Okay. Hi, guys. I'm Jen Sutter. Um, I just wanted to jump in and say hi. I'm the new um, Director of Membership and Retention here at the Chamber. So I know most of you guys, but I just wanted to say hello and enjoy this uh, this nice free service we have here. So I hope you guys are all getting as much information as you can out of it. And it's a beautiful day, so have a good one. By the way, congratulations on your position. Welcome to the Chamber team. Oh, yeah. I mean, you've been around for a lot. Of the a long time, yeah. 17 years I've been hanging around, but they finally hired me. So, you know, <laughs> you hang around long enough, you get a job. That's how it works. So. <laughs> awesome. But thank you. And great information today, Javier. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you That's for having us. Yep. Okay, let's have Mary Lewis. Good morning, everyone. Time. Mary Lewis Barnes here with Alternative Solutions. A lot of great information. I'm really glad I figured out how to get on. Uh, <laughs> I was looking for an actual Zoom link. I didn't think I had to go into Zoom itself and do it, but I'm pretty good at uh, figuring things out. But again, thank you, Javier. And um, I would love to have one of your PDF uh, uh, information set out. I'll get it out. Yeah. Um, and by, by the end of the week, you'll you'll have it in your inbox. I'll so get it out to 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 Cleo and have her kind of send it out, send it out to everybody, or um, or whomever. You can send it to me. I'll email it out to everybody. Yeah. It's a lot of information to digest real quick. Yeah, but it's great information. Absolutely, thank you. And we have Jen. Hi, I'm Jen Havilland with the American Legion Ambulance Station, uh, 64 in Smyrna. This has been uh, very helpful. Again, we're kind of in a weird niche, you call 911, we show up. Um, so our main product doesn't need to be advertised, but our events and things like that is where we're trying to focus because again, that's how we make some of our money. So this has been very helpful. I really appreciate all the information. And again, free is great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Kathleen. 
Um, I'm Katherine Jenkins. I work for Kent County Tourism and Marketing. Um, and I did have a question for you on how you suggest kind of avoiding that, uh, the copyright with songs and such with like reels. Cause I know businesses, it's kind of different than if anyone were to just recreate. Right, right. So if you're doing the fun stuff, uh, you, you know, you can just find a training audio and use it and that's allowable by the copyright because you can re, you know um so that 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 answers that but if you're going to pre edit something outside of that platform and upload it as a reel i would recommend using like not copyrighted like there's a lot of services out there that have you know background music and stuff um that you can use in your video um that it's royalty free that you can use but uh, i think that they set it up in a way that it's easy to use you know, copyrighted material within your reels, as long as you kind of not embed it into the video you upload, you 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 add it, you know, through through Instagram or through TikTok from from that library they have. Oh, okay, so, thank you. Because I know they do like different rules for businesses. Like I'll notice on my personal account, there's a lot more sounds I'm allowed to use than with business. So right, just so whatever is whatever is available. Mm -hmm use i mean i i know it's it's a it's it's frustrating sometimes but you know again the tactic it's fun to to get to get a uh a, a trending hashtag and a trending audio and hit it out there i did that with my, my daughter was and i were you know with with high ground she's she i um she helps she does some stuff for me as a contractor and a few months ago we did like 10 of them together and you know she's really good at that too and so we did a something that was tied to to business and marketing but used a trending hashtag and 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 a music that was being used at that point. And within 24 hours, it had like you know 12, 13,000 views, right? To me, that's exciting, but that does not that was for fun. There was mm -hmm. I didn't expect a hey, I'm gonna get five new high ground customers out of this. It's just I was testing some of the things, right? Yeah. But you know, whatever's available, I would use and I wouldn't even play around with that with the copyright stuff because then quickly they can shut you down. Thank you. No, you're welcome. Okay, Dina. Good morning, everybody. I'm Dina. Um, I think we've most of us have met. Um, Javier, thank you so much for doing this today. As always, a lot of great information. Um, I know I was on and off camera, but I was listening. <laughs> and so <laughs> it was it was all really good. Um, you know, previous to my sitting in this chair, I was in the marketing office here. And Javier was probably the um, biggest influence on my growth as a marketer. Um, lots of great information. He knows a lot of stuff. So, um, you know, reach out to him. And uh, he is always happy to be of help. So thanks, mm -hmm. Javi. Oh, thank you. And we have Mary Lewis. You already did her. Did I? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Who's next? Let's see. Who hasn't spoke? Rachel. Hi, I'm Rachel Rahm. I'm also with Kent County Tourism, but I'm on um, visitor services. I don't have any further comments. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Alicia, is that how you say your name? Alyssa. I'm seeing you. Close. Alyssa. That's close. Yeah, so my name is Alyssa. I'm the operations manager over at CNU Fit. I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with Evans, who is our CEO. Um, you've probably met him before. So yeah, it was good stuff. I took a lot of notes. Good. Alyssa, I think probably gets the long distance award for today, right? Yes. Tell yes. us where you're tell us where you're zooming from. So I live in Germany. <laughs> wow. wow. So welcome. What time is it there? It is now 3 p.m. So I'm six hours ahead of you guys. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's Alyssa. Always ahead. Always ahead of the game. <laughs> you go, girl. Nice to see you. And we have Amy. Hello, all. I'm Amy DeBenedictus. I'm a volunteer with American Legion and Ambulance Station 64. And I do, as Jenny mentioned, we do a lot of events and, you know, we started a training center. So my mission is to get us out there so people know who we are. Thank you. And we have Kathy. Cresco. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Kathy Cresco. I'm with the First State Web Footers Walking Club. Social media is, we're learning. 
Okay, we realize how important it is in order to reach out to the community. So thank you very much for the information today. Enjoyed it. Uh, like I said, we're still learning. We're growing. So I'm absorbing as much as I can. Thank you. I'm glad you learned. Thank you. Thank you for being here. And I think we have Lisa left. Hi, um, I'm sorry, I'm not on video. I'm, I was driving in. I'm Lisa Strazowski, and uh, that was my dog that was making noise. I apologize. No problem, no problem. <laughs> hey, I'm she moving. doesn't like the car. <laughs> I'm moving around because um, I'm about I'm, to. Run out. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm moving around now because I'm trying to be rude. I'm running out of battery and trying to find a plug. <laughs> Don't mind me. Uh, well, thank you. Thank you so much. You were wonderful. And I work at Delaware Tech Community College, and I do communication and planning. So um, I work with the marketing team um, and do communication here. So very helpful. Thank you. I used to be an adjunct there. I taught video production with Patty and the visual communications team for a few years. Oh, uh, cool. Cool. That is awesome. Yeah. They probably could still use you. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> there's always a need. Right, right. Always no. good for adjuncts. <laughs> they're trying. They're trying. When, I, when I started high grant, I had to kind of drop out of that. I didn't have, I needed more, you know, there was a lot of time there, but I loved working over there. It was fantastic. Awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you. Did I miss anybody? Or did I get everybody? I think I got everybody. Oh my God, you're about to run out of battery. <laughs> yeah. Well, I want to thank you for coming, Javier. It was great. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Enjoyed it very much. And I will send that out to everybody. I want to thank our um, sponsors, La Baguette and Tracer L. Dose, um, for being our sponsors for Coffee Coaching. And we have another one next month. So hopefully everybody will be there. And if anyone has any suggestions of anything that you'd like to hear or maybe even speak about, let me know. Great. Thank you. And also, just so you know, the holiday gift auction is coming up at the end of the month. Um, actually, the silent portion of it, which is available even from Germany, um, is going to be totally online starting this Friday at 2 p.m. So it's going to run for a whole week. So if you would like to you know, get the link and know how to be part of that, anybody who's anywhere in the world, um, just give us a call. We're happy to share. That was the commercial for today. <laughs> yes. See, she could she could do that really good on Facebook and <laughs> <laughs> thank you everybody. Well, thank you, everyone. Thank you. Have a wonderful and I'll watch for that uh paper yeah. from yeah, you. I'll get that to you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you again. Bye. Lots of information. <laughs>